Hello, good morning, and welcome to another video from Paraplays. And today we're going to be going up to Respawn, and we're back in Udders, back in Uddersfield. Can't stay away from the bloody place. And yes, it is absolutely freezing. Broken on your alibi, but it's just a prize. I bring death for in the future. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too early in the morning for me. Bloody early mornings. Oh, uh, there's soft, there's soft, there's soft. Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplays and another airsoft video. And in today's video we're going to be visiting Respawn in Huddersfield. Now these guys haven't been running for that long and in this video I'm going to be popping on down there and I'm going to give you my thoughts and views on the day, the site, the facilities and how I actually enjoyed the whole experience of playing airsoft down at Respawn in Huddersfield. So here we are, we are literally up near the moors up in Udders. And uh, it really is remote up here and there's a lot of places in Huddersfield I really, really do like. As you can see we are literally out upon Noah's. So here we are walking down now and as you can see I've got eyes like a Chinaman. I can't do early mornings. So I'm walking down with a few little bits in this box which I find handy. And we're walking down there. And we're just parking up there. We've been told to move a little bit because of the farmers that actually go up there. So this is where we are. If I turn around, there's a little sign there and we're going to be heading down this path. And we're told that it gets really quite muddy at the bottom and even some 4x4 vehicles have been sliding around in the mud at the bottom. Hence why a lot of us have been parking up here. So let's get down into Respawn, see what we think. I'm told it's a really good environment, a little bit jungly, uh, hills, trees, usual stuff that we like. Let's crack on. Eventually at the bottom of the winding road you'll come down here and you'll see the respawn main base and this is the place where you actually get all your kit ready and get suited up and ready to rock and roll. Now this place is a little bit on the small side so how they actually manage with much larger player base or whether they limit it is something I'm not quite sure but this is where you get all your kit ready to get out on the field. Now Respawn have a slightly different system to other sites I've played, instead of this being the medical badge, which is usually red, it's actually your team badge, so you've got blue and red for the op 4. You also have one of these blue bands, and this is required for when you have to respawn and you go back, you actually put this over a computer terminal that says kill, and it then tallies up all the scores, meaning it's a lot more digital, rather than having to do it the old way of the marshals having to write it down on a piece of paper. Directly outside that hut is the safe zone which you can see on screen now, so this is everybody's just socialising and waiting to go in. So in this place there is no ammo, no magazines in, anything, you're not allowed to have any weapon and of course with the old rules of airsoft you're not allowed to point your weapon at anybody else. I've been going under some tarpaulin, this becomes the area where it's chronoed, you can see that on the box on the right hand side here. And what happens at the beginning of the day, even though we've already had the safety briefing, it's the usual stuff, you know, no visors off, no shooting under this, DMR, FPS limits and all that good stuff. They then take you down into this little area here, and there's actually a flat area behind me and there's a generator a little bit further out, which is where the actual game zone begins. So you do have to watch the respawns, which is where I'm pointing now a little bit further up making sure that the enemy don't come out because the respawns do swap every 10 minutes so you've got to watch out so here we are just splitting the teams off ready to go out into the field before the game officially begins when the marshals communicate on the radios so here we are team blue actually moving up to our respawn point before the marshals can say the actual game is a go and I will be honest, the actual first objective, I didn't have a clue where the hell it was, as a lot of other players as well seem to be uh, struggling a little bit until you get your head around where the site is and the locations for everything. A lot of new players there today, so a lot of people were in the same boat as myself and Steve, or Saxon, as he's going to be known in the rest of the video. And... 
today really was a learning lesson for me. I noticed this first point here is I'm going out with DMR, the designated marksman. So I'm engaging it quite a long distance with 400 FPS. And I found that the actual tack vest became an issue. I couldn't get low enough onto the ground, even with the bipod on the highest setting at certain points. And this became quite frustrating. I ended up actually just using the sight to aim for the enemy and then using real line of sight with my eyes over the top to see where the rounds were going. So this is not ideal. So another issue as well was Steve, which <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. He got himself some industrial goggles and he had his glasses on underneath and instantly after running up to this point his glasses steamed up and then his goggles steamed up as well. And all I could hear him was effing and blinding and swearing and he couldn't even see his own hand in front of his face. And when I was shouting the enemies over there and he couldn't see him I said come here come here next to me. He couldn't even see where I was. So funny. So that, again, comes down to kit experience for the first few games, and eventually he did actually borrow some wire mesh goggles. Well, it's very, very cool fighting in woodland. And fuck me, is it hot? Really going to have to think and consider about the kit and what I'm actually wearing. Um, I've lost Steve, who I actually came with, and to be honest, it can be a little bit confusing. I didn't bring a watch, which doesn't help. On which objective are you doing and how you actually capture it and this whole swapping the respawns every 10 minutes I find a little bit confusing but we shall crack on fantastic sight though definitely need to consider getting a lighter kit for the DMR but so far it is brilliant okay so I've just come out of spawn and I've seen a guy a sniper down here I've got two blues moving over to my left. The objective has just changed. So decisions, decisions. What I'll probably do is I'll break this site up into two videos. One with a little bit more of gameplay and a full site tour where I actually go around and describe the different areas. But in this video, it's really going to be a mainly an overview of what I actually think of the actual site. And I can tell you now, it feels completely different fighting here than it does at, say, a dedicated airsoft site. And I use this with air quotes, quotes, quotes. It feels more realistic. It feels much more enjoyable to be fighting in in different terrain with hills and valleys and gullies and death lades. It, uh, you know, even with muddy tracks and single track going through feather uh, ferns and bracken and things like that and there's even a swamp down there it just feels fantastic to fight in this environment and camouflage really does come into play here I can imagine if you had a ghillie suit you would be nigh on impossible to see in some of this environment especially up on the hills where it overlooks the path that come up to some of the main playing fields whoa 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 that's close Something that's always impressed me about Airsoft is the actual honour system. Now, most games, such as PC games and Milsims, there's always some twat old cheat news hacks and things like that. And I found that, you know, if you stick with two or three of your team members, even though you don't know these guys, there is a real sort of team camaraderie together there. And there's none of this, you know, I'm a, I'm a pro, experienced Airsofter, you're a noob. Blah blah blah. You can you can either tell them or just not you know just hang around with these guys and you find that they actually communicate and talk about the game. There's no jibber jabber about anything else. The honor system I've seen you know people getting even slightly shot or a ricochet and they fulfilled that honor system and said hit. I really do enjoy that aspect of it. I'm sure. As I've been told, on my journey of Airsoft, there are going to be many idiots and plebs along the way, as there is with anybody, but we'll just smash them with the butt of our rifle and move on. Not going to put up with any of that crap, as you well know me quite well by now, hopefully. Um, yes, the medical system works as usual. You get hit once, then the white armband goes around my left arm, or whichever arm doesn't cover up your covered band. And then if I get shot again, I'm out and I have to go back to the respawn. Now, one of the slight negatives I'm going to say about this site is that they change the respawn areas every 10 minutes, which is fine, it keeps it fair because one of the respawns, the yellow one in, in this case, is a little bit further out than the blue one. 
But this tends to, there was so many players I could hear throughout the day shouting, Marshall, Marshall, where's the respawn for blue? Is it this way or that way? I really don't think this is a good idea for the site, and I hope this, they take this on board as a, as a positively negative, if that makes sense. I'm not being overly critical. There's so many players shouting this out, it did become a bit ridiculous after a while. They should probably do it as they do with other sites, as in Blue Respawn is, stays in the same place until lunch and everybody goes back in, and then it swaps halfway through the day. This really would make the process so much easier for, the, for a lot of players, because it was, as I mentioned again, same thing over and over again people asking where's blue Where, where's our respawn i've got no idea what actually happens was if i was blue and i went back to the say the my respawn and i just missed out on it and it was yellow and i went in i would have to wait there for 10 minutes again frustrating another little plus i think that the that they could look at for this site is regarding the respawns is have a few drinks water pop whatever something so you can have a, a break at the respawn points would be an absolute lifesaver and i know quite a few people when we went in we were discussing that saying that would be fantastic because they don't have that at any other sites either <laughs> what was that <laughs> No, you know you love it. Out of all the scenarios there at Respawn today, I think one of the, my most favourite ones was our team, Team Blue, had to escort three what looked like Soviet military personnel with a quad bike. And it was basically we had to ensure that this vehicle got to location one and when we actually got it to location one there's black boxes on the back of the quad and one of us had to pick them up without a weapon in hand and then walk and carry it and place it in a certain location and in this one it was actually over to our left here in a load of like wooden sheds now the downside to this or the plus side or should we say the difficulty of this is that two members of our team blue had to be within five yards of the vehicle in order for the actual driver to then proceed and also the driver could be hit and he would have to have medical treatment by our team and also the two guys who were protecting it we had to make sure that they were alive as well and this really was for me the best scenario out of today because it really did enforce a team play there was lots of players out in the open here and I was just saying, you know, you need to spread out and get yourself into cover. You're all stood out in the open. A saw or a sniper would literally take all these guys out instantly. Now, whether that comes from years of playing mill sims and knowing about cover and manoeuvre, I don't know. I'm not going to big myself up, but it did feel like a lot of players were just stood out in the open, getting shot and getting killed. Now, as you're about to see on screen, because I'm a little bit further back as the DMR, there's actually a guy behind me covering the six, you see. So, so there are people out there who actually know how to play some of these scenarios. And there are quite a few ex-military guys on the field as well. And you can, you can, in all honesty, you can tell the difference between the guys who've got a little bit of experience or guys like myself and some of the others who were just here, new, out of the box for Airsoft and starting to learn it as we go along. Anyway, so what's going to happen in a minute is I'm actually going to take point, which is kind of a strange thing because they weren't moving up at all. So I decided to make point, make sure the front was clear before we actually moved off to location two. Really, this should have been, in an ideal world, the saw gunner coming up here and clearing this field and blatting anything that was on the other side of here. But this is about... Probably my favourite favorite aspect of today, and if there was more scenarios where it was a whole team like this, it would definitely increase my enjoyment. Now that isn't to say that there wasn't other team-based games, there was quite a lot. Find the laptop, extract the laptop, things like that, but I did find that it felt a very... Well, quite a lonely experience. It was not like people tended to stick together in twos and threes rather than a whole group of them. And I did notice as well a lot of players were communicating between little small groups with radios. So that may be something that I look at in future. And uh, tune it in so that you can actually talk to the marshals as well should you need to. Now, I may be wrong at this point because there was a little bit of confusion between some of the players, especially some of the new players like myself. Once you'd actually got the quad to the first location, or the second location, should I say, on screen, you then obviously have to defend for a certain amount of time. Now, I asked a couple of players next to me, how long have we got to keep here to keep the enemy away from getting to these boxes? One of them said 20 minutes and the other one said an hour. So take from that what you will, as you can probably imagine, there was a little bit of confusion throughout the day. 
Now, just a little quick insert here. If you're going to get shot, make sure you know which pocket out of the hundreds of pockets you've got, you've actually got your medic band or your death band. Because this guy was joking, saying, good job we weren't under fire here. We would all be dead instantly. It took me about 15 minutes to find the damn thing. So there's a little tip for you. Know which pocket you've put it in. And because it's Velcro and your gloves are sticky, <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> What's great about Airsoft is, is that it enables you to have different roles, DMR, Assault, Saw Gunner, Marksman, Sniper, etc, etc. And I think I need to start learning a little bit more about my, my role and stop going so sort of like into the action up front. As you can see here, that the well obviously you can't, but the, the Assault members have literally gone further out into the team and spread out quite wide. I'm actually next to the location and I've got the bipod actually resting on the quad bike. So there are a couple of guys behind me rustling around in the bushes who are gonna cover that side from the hills up above. So I need to remember, I need to be a little bit further out and I also need to at some point sort out the weapon, get the hop sorted out, because where I'm aiming is not actually where the BB's going. It's it's too high and I can't adjust the sight anymore. So it's gonna need a little bit of tweaking. And I also had a few problems with the hop up not actually feeding some of the BBs, even though the mags weren't empty. So that's another thing. But again, this is all a learning process. And the more you play, the more these things will come to fruition, especially with the visor. You can see I've taken the balaclava off here because it just helps to reduce the fogging on the mask. But in this game, I actually do get twatted in the neck really quite close. And I've got a nice lovely welt on, on my neck. So I've lost my airsoft cherry. I've popped it. I've been through the pain barrier. And while it is quite painful there and then, it, it's nothing, nothing that you're really going to uh, worry about afterwards. Hey! Hey! Ow, shut the walk of shame. Left the bloody tea bag in here. So here we are. Half time. Or oh, lunch time, as it were. In others. Down at respawn. And I thought I'd give you my thoughts on this site and what I actually think about airsoft here, which is slightly different to the one at patrol base in Selby because that site is predominantly flat and it really is a paintball site that is used by airsofters this is kind of like a dedicated place for airsofters and the environment is absolutely fantastic so if you're looking for sort of streams and woodland and hills and banking um, proper woodland it feels completely different experience than playing at the Yorkshire Pinball. Yorkshire Pinball is more of a skirmish feel to it. This is, feels more quote unquote, you know what I mean, more realistic. Um, as you can see, we're down here in this beautiful valley and it goes all the way down there. And the terrain is quite different. Now, me and Steve have been quite new, not only to Airsoft, but only also to this site. I did find it completely confusing on what the f was going on at the beginning. Everybody rushed down, fighting across the little gully way down here, a little valley, and it's like, well, where's the objective? I haven't got a clue what's going on. So but it's starting to make a little bit more sense now. The numbers on the map at the time correlates to when you're down there, there's actually these large wooden crates with numbers on them. So that area is seven. And I was asking, does that mean if the enemy touch it, blah, blah, blah. It's all to do with you can't allow any within a 10 meter radius. So if you could have 20 blues in there, and if there's one yellow within that 10 meter radius, then no points, and that's how it works. So it is quite good in that aspect. For me, the problems I'm having is with kit. Goggles are steaming up. Although I have ripped the foam out of the top, somebody said try that, that will help you. I'm finding it very restrictive on the face and also on the actual body kit. For DMR, I think I'm gonna to have to get rid of the pouches and have some sort of ammo pouch on the back instead because you just cannot lay down and get into proper sight. And then with the, with the visor steaming up, it's hard to see through the sight at distance. So there's lots of things today that's been a really good learning lesson. And um, so far it's fantastic. I've done my bloody knee in, getting old, getting old para. But uh, I am really quite looking forward to going back out. And one thing, if you're vegetarian like I am, yeah, I don't want to wear it, all right? If you're vegetarian like me, even though you pay for the catering 30 quid, there's nothing, nothing for me, I'm afraid. 
all they serve up is hot dogs so bring your own food if you have any dietary requirements so for me it's Twix Tastic and Mars Tastic yes I'm not sponsored so if you want to chuck some my my way Cadbury's but then again you support Halal so fuck off right time to crack on and enjoy the rest of my Twix how do how do hey now then how do evening TTFN shut up now then